there's a window right behind the camera and there's uh, some people walking by with the dog so that's why she's barking. So today's video is a little bit different than what I usually do in my kitchen because today we are making food for this little girl right here. So I have been making Maddie's homemade dog food for probably three or four years now. Disclaimer, I am not a licensed veterinarian. I'm just sharing the dog food recipe that we've been feeding Maddie. So sometimes we do some variations to this recipe, but this is just kind of a bit of a basic version that I'm gonna show you today. Maddie has been eating this homemade dog food for probably three or four years now, and she is five. Um, she absolutely loves it. She does really well on it. So why did I start making homemade dog food? Because it's a lot of work. It's not easy. I do this every probably two and a half or three weeks. So basically when Maddie was about one or two years old, she was eating just dry dog food kibble. And I replaced one of the bags. I just picked another one up at the pet store. And after I gave her the first feeding of it, she was like struggling to breathe and she was coughing and just having a lot of troubles. I was like in total panic mode. We took her to the vet and we have an amazing veterinarian and she ended up um, spending the night there. And after that, they told us that um, she's really sensitive to different foods and she has a sensitive stomach and we should be careful what we feed her, things like that. And then I kind of just started doing my own research into the pet food industry as a whole and what really was in commercial pet foods and I learned a lot. I will put the link down below for a great documentary called Pet Fooled and you can find this on Netflix. It has a whole lot of great information out there if you're just trying to get into uh, like homemade dog food and maybe learn some more about the commercial pet food industry. So before we start, I do want to mention a couple things and give you a couple reasons why homemade pet food can be a whole lot better than commercial kibble. So basically the dog food industry is run by the same companies that make candy bars. So in my mind, they're not really qualified in pet nutrition. There are also some important um, reasons to feed homemade or fresh dog food. So if you're looking down, I have a couple little notes right now. Dogs fed a homemade diet using high quality foods from their owners versus commercial pet food had a life expectancy of 32 months longer, that is, that's almost three years. And we love our little fur baby. So, you know what, I just wanna do whatever I can to make sure that she is fed the best food and that she's happy and healthy and can live a long life because I want her here for as long as possible. The packaging on dog food labels can also be extremely misleading. So here are some facts that I learned from the Pet Fooled documentary. If the dog food says the word with, it only needs to contain 3% of that ingredient. If they use the word dinner or formula, it only needs to contain 25% of that ingredient. So packaging is very misleading. So today experts claim that 60% of dogs will develop cancer in their lifetimes. That is just way too high of a statistic, so I just wanna do everything that I can to prevent that from happening to my dog because why wouldn't I? I would do the same if I had a human child. So studies have found that dogs who were fed leafy green vegetables at least three times a week were 90% less likely to develop cancer. Just by adding some leafy green vegetables into your dog's kibble, if you're not ready to start doing homemade food yet, that can make a huge difference. It was also found that dogs fed yellow and orange types of vegetables three, to three times a week minimum for 70% less likely to develop cancer. So again, these are just some vegetables you could be adding into your dog's kibble if you're not ready to do homemade. And I think it's also important to mention too that the ingredients that I use for Maddie are necessarily going to work for your dog. Um, just experiment with different vegetables. Of course, do your research first and make sure that they're safe for dogs, but find out which vegetables your dog likes. Same thing goes with the protein source. Um, for the most part, most dogs do not do well with chicken. So we don't feed her chicken, we give her um, ground turkey. And yes, even though I am plant-based, my dog eats meat because I would never in a million years make that decision for her. I, I don't really agree with uh, vegan dogs, it, that does not sit well with me. 
So I just wanted to mention that in case maybe anyone ever assumed that because I'm plant-based, I feed my dog plant-based. No freaking way. I would never in a million years do that to you. I would never do that to you. Another hidden ingredient in dog food is the dyes and grains. So Devin and I moved. This was probably two years ago now, two or three years ago. And at the time we were feeding Maddie her homemade dog food. She was absolutely loving it. Her face was just all white and fluffy like it is now. Um, but prior to that, when we were feeding her kibble in the first one or two years of her life, she always had black, <laughs> she doesn't want me to touch her. She always had black um, like stains, tear staining under her eyes. And we would go to the pet store and they would say, oh, try this product, try this product to clear it. I tried all of the different things and then from my own research, I discovered that the staining is from dyes in the food. So we had moved and we started to notice that even though she was eating her homemade dog food, her face was turning brown. She was having the black tear staining again and we like were so confused, we could not figure out why. So one day we kind of followed her around to see what she was up to and she had found a bag of kibbles and bits uh, dry dog food that was left in the furnace room that we didn't know about. So she was having a free-for-all for probably three or four weeks just helping herself and I saw the difference because her face turned brown again and after we got rid of that dog food and made it so she couldn't get it anymore um, it still took probably three or four months of eating her homemade dog food for that staining to be out of her system again. I'm gonna show you guys how we make Maddie's homemade dog food today. The first thing that I always start with is, I usually actually throw on a Netflix show and just keep myself occupied. And I peel and chop up a three pound bag of carrots and a sweet potato. Okay, so I have my sweet potato peeled and my three pounds bag of carrots peeled. Next, I'm gonna cut these up. So I'm gonna chop up my sweet potato. It doesn't need to be super small pieces because once it's cooked, we're gonna mash it before we add it into the rest of the dog food anyway. And now for the carrots. Um, I don't mash the carrots, but I do cut them up kind of small so that I can just throw them right into the dog food. Um, with my dog in particular, Maddie doesn't really chew things very well, so I can't really leave big pieces because she will like choke on them. I know that you guys are probably thinking like, oh, dogs aren't that stupid. They learn to not eat so fast, but I'm telling you, she does not learn. We've tried. It's just not worth it. So I just cut them up a little bit smaller for her. So my carrots and sweet potatoes are all chopped. I'm gonna like cover these with water and then boil them until they're soft. Okay, so we have our cut up and peeled carrots and sweet potato. We're gonna turn these on. One always confuses me because it's backwards. <laughs> so I'm going to wash and cut up these ingredients. I'm gonna keep them aside in my bowl here and they're going to get added to the food um, raw with the meat and just kind of get cooked in. <sighs> Maddie, uh, I think she just smelled the broccoli. Hello, little one. Come here. allow my dog on the counter while I'm cooking, but this is her food, so we're gonna allow it today. All right, Mads, do you want some broccoli? Do you want some broccoli? Can you sit? Oh, good girl, high five, high five. Oh, good girl, there you go. I'm just kind of ripping these up into little bite-sized pieces. I know what size she can eat, and I only know that because if I give her a piece of something and it's too big for her, she literally will not eat it, she will leave it. Oh, do you want this? Okay, okay. Just your size, hey girl. She's also obsessed with green beans. I use yellow sometimes in the summer. I always get nice organic fresh beans or beans from our own garden. Let me just show you. You want this? Sit. High five. Hi oh sorry. High five. 
Good girl. Good to be. Hi, darling. Hi, darling. You're so cute. You got broccoli on your head. Okay, so we have our bowl of raw veggies. These are green beans, broccoli, and zucchini. So I'm going to put these aside. So now we're gonna start cooking the meat. I'm using extra lean minced turkey for her because I know it sits well with her. This is her kind of favorite protein. We've tried some other ones. This one seems to be the best. So I'm going to turn this large pot to about medium temperature and I'm gonna wait for it to heat up just a little bit and then I'm gonna add in the meat. I can put a fork through my sweet potatoes now so I know that those are done. I'm going to take them off the heat. Now that my pot is heated up, I'm gonna start adding the meat one at a time. I'm gonna let this cook for a little bit before I start breaking it up. This is it. And <laughs> Maddie is waiting ever so patiently. You waiting for your dog food. It's yours. She, she's licking her lips. Does he smell good? Does he smell good? So now that this is starting to cook a little bit, I'm going to break up the big pieces. The dog food is mostly cooked. There's a little bit of pink left and I do leave some of the pink meat because it's fine for dogs to have raw meat. Um, I just don't do totally raw with Maddie because it doesn't sit well with her. So when it's looking like this, I like to add one two minutes, a little bit of organic turmeric. Start really small when you start offering turmeric to your pets. I only give her about this much in that entire batch of food. So less than probably a teaspoon. So I'm gonna add that to the meat. So you can do your own research there and make your own informed decision. This is just what I do. Okay. And while there's still some pink left, I'm going to add in Today I'm using a bag of frozen chopped kale. Sometimes I use spinach and sometimes I use fresh kale or spinach. When I have it in the summertime, we had fresh kale and spinach in the garden. So that's what we used right now, it's winter. So we're going with frozen organic. So at this time, I'm going to add all of my green vegetables. Next, I'm going to mash the sweet potato. Okay, the carrots are soft enough now. Okay. I'm going to add in the cooked carrots to the meat mixture. And now I'm gonna add in the cooked and mashed sweet potato. And I'm gonna turn the heat completely off now because everything in here is cooked and ready to go. So I'm just kind of mixing to make sure everything is well combined. So her food is completely cooked, heat is off. Now I'm going to add in this seaweed calcium. I ordered this from Amazon and I checked before I filmed this video because I wanted to put the link for you guys, but right now it says that it's currently unavailable. Um, I think this has happened before and I'm probably just gonna have to wait until it's back in stock, but one of these lasts me probably six months. And this is about $35 and I do add this in just to make sure she's getting enough calcium. Add one tablespoon per pound of homemade dog food. So I usually add about seven teaspoons to her food. I'm also adding about half a cup of cooked white rice. This is totally optional. I don't do this every time. So now that our dog food is done, um, I'm going to divide it up into these little containers that I can put in the freezer. I do keep some in the fridge <laughs> enough for a couple days, but once it's cool, I will freeze them and then I can just take one out the night before when I notice she's low. So first, I'm actually gonna dish some up for her so she can have some now when it cools off a little bit. There, we're gonna let this cool, okay baby? No, no, no. Soon though. She knows that this is hers and she loves it. It's kind of cool to, uh, oh, 
honey, to let other dogs try this because they also love it. Like I used to just feed this to Maddie and my mom's two dogs ate kibble and they would go insane for Maddie's food. So my mom actually started kind of following this recipe as well and feeding it to her two dogs and they both do really well on it. They love it. Of course, she makes some changes um, because they like some different things and there's some vegetables that they don't like. And she actually does hers in slow cooker. So that way you don't have to cook things separately. You can just kind of throw it all in there. But one thing I really do want to try one of these days is cooking this in the Instant Pot because the Instant Pot is supposed to keep like all of the nutrition. So I do want to experiment and try that. Um, I'll let you know when I do. Oh. <laughs> Just about cool enough, okay? Just a couple more seconds. You're so, I know you love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you learned something new today and that you enjoyed this video. If you liked my video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm making new videos every week. If you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. Bye!